spot. I simply know how Eddie feels about it. I want to talk to him because talk to him about it. It just seems to me that the tactics and the things that took place in there with under the direction of Tux Newman uh, is something that must be watched very closely. I, I noted that you made a comment uh, to Newman last week. It was that you were the one that was going to. He's telling you what the, what the uh, what the matches were going to be. And, uh, I agree and I with you, Lance. Him. It was uncalled for. Okay, let, let's let's roll this tape now. Eddie and I are going to be talking about it. Bear in mind, this was a uh, Southern Heavyweight Championship match between the King, who was the champion. And at this point, you see Tux Newman jump into the ring. The referee was down. A Lawler coming up off of Savage. He had Savage in what I consider to be a position where he would have pinned him. Newman jumps in the ring. Uh, it resulted in a disqualification. Lawler grabs him and was going for a pile drive. And there's no two ways about that. But Newman was uh, an, an interloper in the ring. Uh, Savage hit him from behind, as you can see, fired him out on the floor. And this is only the beginning of the mayhem, which, though it was acted out by Savage, and he was loving every minute of it, the wild son of a gun was just eating it up as he was tearing people apart in there. You see Newman directing him, throwing him back in the ring. Tux Newman, in my opinion, orchestrated the whole dad blame thing, Eddie. And, and here you see a pile driver that Savage slammed Lawler down into that mat. It's all over. He's already lost on a disqualification. Uh, uh, he retains the title for the simple fact that he was disqualified. That's Newman right. knew he was going to get right. beat. That's right. This is it's just one purpose right here. He wanted to injure Lawler. And any time the man tries to injure someone uh, on purpose, there, he's bound to be scared of what the man can do. That's right. Now, I wanted to point out, there goes Jeffrey, referee Jerry Calhoun. Do you see the object in the right side of your screen? This is a huge metal plate on which uh, the southern belt, there it is, right That's there, right, right in the middle, middle of it, that, that Savage carried that southern belt on. He takes Lawler, Calhoun tried to stop him, and there he pile drive Lawler's head. Now, that's the second pile drive. He flattened that thing out. It was a curved, big, heavy metal plate that he had the belt around. And, and that is what he, he uh, slammed Lawler's head on. It was done with Newman throwing it in there, Newman directing the situation, and he obviously, as Eddie said, he had one intent in mind, and that was to put Lawler out of action. Look at Savage here. I think that's where a lot of the damage came from. Well, right sure. There. Came right down behind him. He had the southern belt around his arm, slammed him right in behind. There he goes again. And remember, the match is over. That's right. This is all after uh, Savage has already been disqualified for the actions of Tush Newman. Now, Following this, Lawler, of course, was taken to the hospital. But I, I want to I want to make the the point here that if it were not for the fact of the kind of size of neck and and the conditioning and all that Lawler has undergone, he would have been dead. I'm convinced of it right now. Jerry, at that point, you could see was holding his neck in there. He was in pain. Oh boy, in pain. I got to tell you, and Savage is down there. Uh, blowing his horn and screaming at the folks and and carrying on in that totally unpredictable manner in which he does and uh, it was uh, well it was it was a situation that really disturbed me because Eddie was down there and and was checking Jerry out That's at that right point. I was talking to Jerry and I was and, and you had already made some decisions right at that point hadn't That's you? right I couldn't get the right answers from all I told him I was going to call for help and he said, no, I'll be all right. Just let me stay here just a minute, and I'll walk out. But, uh, you know, anytime you have injuries to your neck or your spinal column, you need uh, attention. So I demanded that Lawler go to the hospital. He kept saying, no, 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 I don't want to go. But I finally talked him into going, and him being in the pain that he was in, he, I don't think Lawler really realized what could have been wrong with him. He was not thinking clearly, Eddie. There's no question about that because uh, he, he, he was making comments like, 
hey, let me back at him. I am ready. And right. I mean, you know, he just didn't really realize at that point that he had been slammed so goofy that he didn't realize exactly what happened. They, they took him out to the hospital, and, and uh, he was x-rayed and so forth. And again, here's a, here's a question of where conditioning in the, in the size uh, neck. And Eddie, you've been through this yourself. Right. And, and, and uh, even on somebody who, who is in that kind of condition, the compression on, on that neck and the spine. It could be very, very dangerous late on. I, I, re I believe the next morning after he woke up, he was certainly glad that he went to the hospital. I was glad he went. I demanded that he go, and I'm glad that I told him to go. Right the off the bat. The guy gets a headache, he goes to the hospital, and he's sick. Jerry Lawler, if you're watching right now from the hospital bed, from under the hospital bed, from a wheelchair, from a nursing home, I don't care. You should be here. You know, Jerry Lawler, that's all past news. I came here five weeks ago. I said I was going to get rid of Jerry Lawler. He's old news. He's garbage. There's nothing more to be said. You people aren't going to see Jerry Lawler again. I told you what I do. I say what I mean, and I'll do what I have to to stop anyone. Now, let's just completely change the subject and talk about something very interesting, and that is my man, Lanny. Come here, Lanny. Lanny is one of the greatest orators in the world today, as well as wrestlers. I want to show a film on Lanny. Forget about Jerry Lawler. Forget it. It's garbage. Get to me. Garbage, too. Yeah. Show, 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 show. Have you got the tape that he's talking about? You better have. Show is it. that tape there? You got to believe, baby. Run it. Let's go, everybody. <laughs> inspiration. Now, forget about Lawler. Let's talk about this sweet daddy Seeky. That's you, boy. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't say boy. But you are next. You are on my list. You double-crossed me. Nobody does that to the Tux Man. Nobody. And you will go down. Remember that, Seeky. Remember that, boy. Uh, oh, uh, Tux, we've got some action out here, so if you can clear out Eddie, thank you. Chuck Newman, Randy Macho Man Savage, and the poet Lanny Poppo, who uh, may have in store for them exactly, I saw what it said, tell Jackie Fargo the king is dead. May have in store nothing. Tomorrow night, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, the Mid-South Coliseum, we are going to pay a visit to Stephanie and Stan Arena, better known as the Dolly Sisters, or as you call them, 
the fabulous ones. What is so fabulous about them? Nothing. I got news for you, girls. Ring your bells. Now, I want all the boys out there, I want all the men out there, but most of all, I want all you girls out there to come on down to the Mid-South Coliseum because I've got two boys that are going to take the title belt away from Stephanie and Santarina, the fabulous ones. You know, they come out here and they say, we're managed by Jackie Fargo. Who the heck is Jackie Fargo? And then they say, we don't pay anything to Jackie Fargo. Of course you don't. You're too stupid and you're too cheap. That's why you don't. Then they refer to me as Cat. My name is Mr. Newman to you, girl. And I'll tell you something. Once again, we will be at the Coliseum early tomorrow. So all you fans who want to come out and see my boys, come early. Get your tickets early. You know why? Because you will be a part of history. A part of winning the AWA Southern Tag Team title. I got rid of Lawler. We got his belt. Now I'm going to get rid of the Fab, or the Dolly Sisters, or Stephanie, or Santa Arena. I'm going to get rid of them. And these men will have belts all over their body. They will be the champions, and you can come, and you can kiss them, because they will be the kings of tag team wrestling. That's what you mean. I am the king of professional wrestling, and I am the king of the South. Jackie Fargo is washed up. Yeah, he is, yeah. And this guy right here, Lawler, he's in the past now. Now you're talking to prison, yeah. Jackie Fargo, wake up, man. Somebody wake up, Jackie Fargo. I understand that Stephanie and Santorino, or whatever their names are, they bought him a bar, yeah, where it doesn't close at night. They can stay in the bar, and he can stay asleep, and he can put his head down on the rail, and he could, uh, yeah, dream of things. It will place. be a wild man to be a One more thing. One more thing. I am the king of Memphis, Tennessee. I am the king of Memphis, Tennessee. And Memphis State, they're going to be washed up after this afternoon, too. Oh, yeah. Memphis State, Jackie Fargo, and Jerry Lawler. Okay, Randy, you guys, oh, you tomorrow. don't know how not tough Monday. Stan You're not smart enough. Not Monday. Tomorrow, Sunday, at the Mid-South Coliseum. Just talk to them. Tomorrow, Sunday. Okay, Dave, let's go to the ring and see these guys. Get on, you can do it tomorrow. Yeah, when I said rough, I'm talking about these two gentlemen right here. The fabulous ones, Stan and Steve, who will be taking on Savage and Popo defending those titles. You know, I've been watching the show, Lance, like everybody else, Stan, and I've been sitting back there, and we've been watching old Tex Newman come out here just bragging, shooting his mouth off. He drags one guy out after another. He puts his hand on the guy's back. He tells him how great he is. He puts his hand up their shirt, and they don't say anything. He does all the talking, and they just move their lips. Well, you know, we know Randy Savage. We know Lanny Popo. We've watched them in the ring. We've watched them wrestle. We've seen them against everybody. And you know, there's just something lacking there. There's just that something little something lacking. And I'll tell you, Randy Savage, you know, I'm sure you're real proud of yourself for what you've done to Jerry the King Lawler. But I'm sure that doesn't put Jerry the King Lawler back in here. I'm sure he's just going to take that rest and he's going to come back. But that's all aside. Now, you're pretty famous for dropping people on their head and hurting their neck. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You're not going to drop this guy right here on his neck, and you're not going to drop that guy right there. And as for Jackie Fargo, that you keep dragging his name into it, well, let me tell you something. Jackie Fargo's got better things to do to listen to you, to listen to Tex Newman, or listen to any of that garbage. So we don't need Jackie Fargo to come down here and watch our back. We can watch our own back. So, Randy Savage, if you've got plans of wearing two belts, and that goof of a brother of yours, Lanny's got plans on wearing one belt, you can forget it. Because in Memphis, we're going to walk out with the belt, and we're going to come back with the belt. And we've already showed guys like Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert and your brother last week that when it gets time to get down, that we can get down. And if that's what you want to see out of the fabulous ones, that's exactly what you're going to see, Randy Savage. As for you, Tux, you're going to have to change your name. I got it figured out that you named yourself after a suit. So after Monday, Sunday night, you're going to be, what is it, double knit? Leisure suit? Can he be Leisure Newman? Does that sound good? That's fine with me. Whatever you say, Steve. Stan. I'd like to know what kind of a guy calls himself a macho man, sits out here in the parking lot, and makes glitter posters all day. Is that a macho guy? Or he's back there, he's throwing all new words on his robe, and his brother, Lanny, out here doing cartwheels and somersaults. What are you doing, Lanny? Auditioning for Circus of Stars or what? This is wrestling, guys. You want to put a lot of guys in the hospital. You're out here obviously trying to hurt people now. You're not worried about winning the belt so much. You want to hurt guys. 
Well, Sunday night, boys. I hope the paramedics are there, because I can see it now. Those red lights flashing that siren going, woo, 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 woo. And you got the IV hooked up to your two goofs, Tuck. And they're going to be taking a one-way trip to a hospital. You want to hurt us? You want to hurt us in Memphis? Well, come on down and try and hurt us. Because many guys have tried before, and many have failed. And we got something for you that Ajax won't take off. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Fight! Boy, that's what they'll be hollering in the streets of the old Coliseum. Fight! When the fans go against Popo and Savage. All right, Dave, let's go to the ring for some action. Climbing up on the ring apron right now. PYT, the pretty young things. Set for a one fall, 10 minute time limit match. Introducing at a total weight of 454 pounds from Charleston, West Virginia. Over on the right of the screen, the Patton brothers, Mark and Brad. Going against them at a total weight of 467 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee and Union City, Tennessee with their manager Tuck Newman in their corner. Norvell Austin and Coco wear the pretty young things. BYT, this match one fall, 10 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun will be the referee. Oh yeah, and I'll tell you, these guys have met once before and the Batons earned a shot back at uh, the PYT. Yeah, well, you tried that the last time you saw them. A couple of really outstanding young athletes. Bill time, and here we go. And we've already said, uh, Davey, this PYT, they're looking as rough as any team I have ever seen. There is no doubt about it. They have come back into the area here and they have been mean, they have been fast, they have been good. Got to give the devil his due. Norvell Austin fires Batten into the rope. Nice move by Batten. He brought the foot up. That stopped Norvell briefly. Batten to the corner and gets the tag. And is that Brad in there now? Brad in there right now. Right, Brad Batten against Norvell oh. Austin. There's a tag by Norvell. PYT with a quick tag, too. Heard him a flip. Coco Ware did as he came off the rope. There's a slam. <laughs> Referee moving Coco back out of the ring as Norvell took his tag, a backbreaker down. Good night. Look at these guys go. Such speed. Aren't they prettier than the bab? Aren't they? Hey, That's gorgeous, right? That's gorgeous. Mean, I will give you that much out of it. As they can flat wrestle as Coco takes the tag back and goes right back to work. Slamming away with the knees, the elbows. Short, tight roll over the shoulder down the center of the ring. A right hand, the referee steps in. And a chin lock from behind. Tag on Norvell. Well, they give it that little double team shot as they uh, tag out to Norvell staying in there, though. And Brad Batten trying to fight his way so that he can get loose, maybe get back to the corner for a tag on his brother. PYT with uh, good tag team strategy. They have decided that the Batten that's in there now is going to stay for a while. Norvell picking him up by the hair. Right fist. He tried to hide it. He just doubled it up and punched him in the nose. There's a tag made. Coco Air coming in there for PYT. Boy, the same referee is warning him about the doubled up fist. We'll see if that does any good. Crowd trying. It won't. You know it and I know it. I was wearing Austin. Boy, they're doing whatever they want to do. Crowd really getting in behind the Battens, and Mark and Brad need a shot in the arm for a fact. They cannot get loose from the pressure. Look at Norvell. All he's doing is hot dogging and taking a couple. But staying in there when maybe he should have used his energy to get to the corner for the tag, I think, Dave. Uh, he took that shot to the midsection, and Norvell Austin right down on it. Yeah, right at the moment, they happen to be on top. But we, we've seen the Batons who have tremendous stamina. Right. Stay in there before, look at, look at Coco. Beat him, let him get close to the tag, and then stop him. Brad. Rip the right hand. Brad needs it bad when uh, Norvell hit him in the nose with that fist. He's, he's got a bloody nose now. He needs to get, uh, get to the tag. Coco grabbing Mark outside. 
Mark Fat was coming right through those ropes after him. The referee got in between. They did that so they could get the referee involved and have a chance to double team Brad. Coco with a front face lock. Yeah, we can see the blood from uh, Brad nose down on the tights of Norvell now. They battered him pretty heavy. Chuck Newman sitting there. He is very satisfied with what he's looking at with a rugged PYT. Whoa, Norvell takes a couple of them. Now go to the corner. Get away. Staggering is Brad, and he takes a shoulder that knocks him off his feet. Huh? Norvell just shoved him uh, off his feet. He hit him with a shoulder. No way he could get to the tag. Meanwhile, Mark, ooh, reverse neck breaker by Norvell Austin. He leaves Brad laying in a ring, right in the middle of the ring, for Coco Ware to come in. Mark trying to get uh, a little encouragement going for his brother, but he's sent back to the corner. Brad, he got away. Coco's legs, he's on his way. That's the tag. Boy, he's been watching the beat up on his brother, so he takes on all of them. Coco, oh! Upper arm across the back of the neck by Coco. Look out, here it comes. The brain buster. Oh, boy, I, I just even hate to see it. He drives Mark down into the canvas. And now, instead of going ahead and getting the pin, Shucking and jiving, Norvell comes up, makes the cover. One, two, three. What a vicious move. One of the worst I have ever seen in a year ago. That thing is murder. It's not a pile driver, but by golly, it has exactly the same effect. He jams the top of his head down into the mat. Yeah, class. Well, the time on it was 5 minutes, 21 seconds. The brain buster from Coco Ware is what wraps it up. PYT is pretty young things. Get the victory in 5 minutes, 21 seconds of action. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the way this brain buster is operated in the first place. Now, look at this. You think that doesn't take some strength? Coco drives him straight up in the air and watch. Oh, man, oh, man, the entire weight. Uh, it differs only, as Dave pointed out, in, in from the, the uh, pile driver in the fact that your weight is not on it, but all of the opponent's weight. Murder. And the PYT continue winning. They haven't, uh, haven't lost one since they came into this area. They got quite a streak going, as a matter of fact, and they're looking mighty mean. Uh, day for uh, uh, the Japanese press in that you were around taking pictures of wrestling and things like that. Is that correct, Jimmy? Yes. Uh, I go all over the country and uh, I come down here to the United States and I take pictures everywhere. And, uh, of course, you take them in Japan. You work a lot of wrestling there. You've had a chance to see a lot of them. And you have some of the, uh, some of the magazines right here that uh, you have taken pictures for. And we thought you folks would, would be interested in this because here's a guy who has really had uh, an opportunity to see all kind of wrestling. Hey, here's the king uh, with, with handsome Jimmy when they were over there. So people were very much expecting that uh, he came, uh, before he came down to Japan and uh, he was so sensational. And he did a great job over there and uh, yeah, people is, uh, the people were looking for Lawler. Yeah. They had never seen him over there, and this was his first visit, I think, to yeah, Japan. Yeah, but he, uh, it was a fast visit for him, but uh, he drew more people than anybody else in that country. And I came here to make some interview for uh, Mr. Lawler, uh, but I'm sorry to hear that he's injured now. Yeah, well, we're hoping, Jerry, uh, of course, you, you know what happened. You've heard the story. We were talking about it before, about the pile driver from Savage and all. Uh, here, let's see if you've got some more. Yeah, let me hold that for you. And uh, these are some other. Let's let's see the. Come on, Fox. can I even do a decent interview without you guys? This is not your interview. Who is this? You are coming up later. This is Jimmy Suzuki. Will you act at least civilized for a little while? Hold it a minute, champ. Hold it a minute. 
Huh? No, you're not going anywhere. These guys... Wait a minute. Don't tell him that. What the heck? He's showing pictures of a legend, a myth, somebody who's gone. He's no longer here. Lawler, I don't even remember his name. And he's showing... Come on, Tuck. Will you get out of here? We got some more stuff we want to look at. We'll talk to you guys. something right now. Come on. Who is the king of Japan, man? Who's number one in Japan, baby? Talk to the people, man. Tell them who's number one in Japan. Tell them who's the stubborn heavyweight champion. Just say it right now. Talk to the people. Leave the man alone. Stop it. Who's the king of Japan, baby? Oh, you have never been to Japan, then? Jerry Roller went to Japan. What do you mean? Come on, Randy. Open the field. Come on. Don't interfere, Russell. Don't interfere. Nothing's happening. Come on, now. Get him out of here. Don't worry about it. Nothing's happening. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Come on. Don't worry about it. Get right there. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Come on, Randy. Let's go. I'm not going to ask anything. Get out of here, will you? Let's go. No, 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 no. Win. We're talking about win and lose. Savage. You know what happened? Savage and Pablo, they won. Now, we got something to finish. And what we're going to finish is going to be so horrible that I don't want the fans to come out and see it. Because we're going to annihilate the fans. That's you, Stan Arena. That's you, Stephanie. I'm sick. I'm tired of what you do. I'm tired of you bragging out here how good you are. will take you into the map like you've never been taken before. A journey where you will not return. That I promise you. Well, you talk about what, who won the match. Let me tell you this. Who took some punishment out there and who escaped but with a lot of... The Babs! The Babs! Oh, yeah, the the Babs! It's that simple. F-A-B-S. The fabulous one. And fabulous one, you will not be that way come this week. We will have new champions. I predicted about Lawler. I did what I said. I destroyed Lawler. I'm going to do it to everyone that gets in my way. I've got the PYT, and I've got Hoppo and Savage. But most of all, I've got the wrestling world at my fingertips. I am the star of wrestling. I am the creator and the titan and the brain behind everything. You saw what we did to this little guy here, taking my time. Well... Anyone that gets in my way, anyone, will be annihilated like that. Think, there will be no one else, I believe me. Savage rubbed off on you. You sounded as crazy as he did. Hey, just wait. It'll happen Monday night. Just let it all take place. I'll put my money with Stan and Steve. You got no money to put. All right. I got okay, the money. Doug, we have seen and heard enough out of you kind of guys. We're going to take time to go over to... Oh, is this us? for coming out here on that you know I, I, I get I don't like to get mad and upset because I enjoy wrestling too much but I'm tired of heathens and animals and and stuff that you see 
out here with jumping like on Jimmy Suzuki. Well, you Come know, on. let me tell you something, Savage. We're real impressed. You're a tough guy, Savage. You're a macho man. You come out here and jump on some Japanese kid who weighs 130 pounds who takes pictures for a living. You pick your spot, don't you? Why don't you come out right now and try and slap one of us, buddy? Let's see how bad you are. You know, it's, it's really a sick thing, Lance. This guy's over here visiting our country. He doesn't speak that big of English. He, he's back there right now. He's cut open. He feels like he's, he's lost face. He's been dishonored. He's on the phone now. He's, he's wanting to go home. I mean, it's a sad thing. The guy's out here trying to make a living, trying to do a job. And what the hell's wrong with you, Savage? You want to jump on the guy and be a big bad guy. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Anytime, any place, anywhere, you want to show us how bad you think you are, you come on. Because he tried the night, Lance. He tried in the Mid-South Coliseum, and he didn't get the job done. He got his butt kicked. And he and his little twinkle toes brother took off and ran the whole way back to the dressing room, got the little showers and got that little... Oh, man, I can't... Well, I, I don't blame you. I know exactly... There's just no darn excuse for that, Lance. I, no I, I agree with you. That's exactly what I was saying, Stan. It just absolutely gets you fed up with it right to there. He's worked up, ain't he? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, you know, Lance, I've been around just a little bit longer than Stan, and I've seen a lot of it. But it's what it is, is it's frustration. It's like a building. It's like boiling. You know, you talked earlier at the beginning of the show, we've been watching, you talked earlier about the competition, how guys are at edge, how the matches are getting right down to yeah, nip and really. They've gone beyond wrestling. It's gone just out there to a street fight. We went out there in Memphis Coliseum last week, and we had, didn't have one idea of fireman carry, go behind, take down, or nothing. It was go out there and survive. It's survival of the fittest right now. You know, like Hank Williams Jr. said, the pressure is on, and right now the pressure is on the Fabs because we wear the title. We don't have to come out here with them on the back of a fireplace ornament and show them off to everybody out here like Randy does. But at the same time, when you're wearing that title, you've got all that pressure on your back. All we can say is that any time, any place, we hold an open contract, we are the champions, we'll sign any title match anybody wants to be involved in. Well, partner, you have done it up to now, and I'll tell you one thing. You guys are real tributes to the doggone business, and I just, uh... Will you guys please, will you get these guys out of here, Chuck? You can hear their mouth out here, cold mouth. Your time is not now. What do you mean? This the is the time fabulous. is now, baby. You're looking at the time, baby. This is 1985, baby. We're live. I'm talking about... We said what we want to say. If these guys want to... I mean, Steve and I know that we got a little popularity here in the Mid-South. These guys just got here. They want to be popular, too. If you want to be so popular and talk to people, go ahead. We said we want to say. Hey, baby, we're a team. Well, have at it. Go we ahead. We want to be down with one of these. We want to be down with one of these. Why don't you wait? Service. We'll get the opportunity. You know you can't beat it. we had with Mr. X and the Invader gone by the board Constant Ashley and Jerry Oski came out even number wise up. we're going to take time out that is ridiculous we'll take it and I sure don't need any of you out here I'll tell you that one thing for a fact Chuck Newman we have seen a bunch of you today and let I me mean make this short and sweet my man Coco where the PYT North L. Austin come out here for a decent interview to talk to you. And what happens? They get attacked by the fabulous ones. Your champions, they get attacked. All right, fabulous ones. If it's war you want, war you're gonna get. And Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum, 
don't forget, your title's at stake. It's a lumberjack match where there's 12 wrestlers, like Cox Newman, around the ring to make sure you don't run like you did here today and attack my men. You are going to be finished this Monday night, and we will be the new champions. Clapo and Savage, that's all I got to say. I'm tired of looking at you great. Two. Well, I want to tell you one thing. You got your eyes in backwards because it was PYT that did the attacking in there. I just hope, all I hope, is the fact that you are one of those guys down there. I'd like to see you grab Steve Kern and try to throw him back in the ring. Oh, I love that. Well, all right, let's take a look at the action coming up Monday night. All right, we're set to go with a one-fall, 10-minute time limit match. Introducing first from Memphis, Tennessee, at 235 pounds, David Eskin. And going against him from Greece with his manager, Tuck Newman. Weighing in at 279 pounds, Cyclops. This match will be one fall, 10 minute time limit. The referee, Jerry Calhoun. Boy, what a unique outfit. Look at that with that eye right in the middle in there. But he can't be all good, not if Tuck Newman's his manager. I tell you what, with the size he's got, he can be dangerous. Waste no time going to work on David Haskins. He ran him into the turnbuckle. Cyclops, big guy. Haskins, Haskins is not little. Haskins weighs in at 235 and seven. Snap him down. Cyclops sliding the knee off the forehead. David Haskins has not been able to get things going yet. It's early, but boy, Cyclops again. Snaps it over. Using the boot, slides it off the top of the fort. Upper arm across the throat, David Haskins just kind of falls out into the ring. Cyclops says, uh, Cyclops moving slowly, but boy, he's doing some damage when he does make contact, and he's making contact often. About a minute into the action, Cyclops with the left in there. And again, David Haskins off his feet, being picked up by Cyclops. Hangs him over the top rope, using it to choke him. Referee trying to get a break. Flips him back into the ring. Haskins trying to power away from him. Now Haskins fires him into the turnbuckle, follows, but Cyclops moves out of the way. Well, you call it right in this room, Dave. Uh, Cyclops is a is a plotter, boy. He, he just uses he uses that strength and, and pounds away on 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 people rather than dazzling anybody. Big boot in the back twice. David not having a good day at all. He is not looking good with Cyclops, David. Just now he's starting to fire out of there a little. But uh, he was really coming along fine in this particular match. He is not able to manhandle a Cyclops the way he wants to. Look at this. Into him. That's close to a pile driver, but he didn't really pile him. Uh, that's going to be one, two, three. Yeah, winner. Cyclops demonstrating his power here, as uh, Tuck Newman said at one point during the match. Didn't matter what Haskins did, didn't seem to have much effect. And that's it, as Cyclops gets the win. Time on it, a minute 38. Okay, Dave, uh, winner, first appearance, championship wrestling pucks. I don't know what you got underneath that match. Okay, Dave, okay, fans, okay, everybody, look at this man. Do you remember your Greek mythology? Do you remember Medusa, the, the woman with the oh, stick yes. on her head? Oh, yes. Do you remember Achilles the heel? Do you remember all the Greek mythology characters? This is not a character. This is the supreme god of Greek mythology, Cyclops. Everyone was afraid of Cyclops. There wasn't anyone around, but when Cyclops came, they ran. This man came straight from Europe. Former 
lightweight wrestler from the middle of the world. Now, the heavyweight champion of Europe, Cyclops from Greece. And I'll tell you something, you're looking at so much power and raw strength. When I saw him in Europe, I couldn't believe it. I said, you have to come. But he was so booked that it took me a lot of money, a lot of money to get this man. And now I've got him. And now he's here in the South. And now he will destroy any wrestler that gets in his ring. There's no pain in this man. There's nothing. Nothing stops him. And no wrestler will stop him. And I'll tell you something. You can come on, anyone, and try to challenge him. Look, look, look at that. I got my phone let me tell you something, Russell. You are looking at a world champion. Okay, Doc, we heard it. We'll and see the it. Behind the world champion. Yeah, the brain's behind the world champion. Don't forget that by any means. Uh, enough for the arm on the shoulder. Thank you. We'll see you in the ring here. Yes, yes, Doc. This is a